And good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to West Hartford Sports here on Channel 5, presented by the War Chief Sports Council. Tonight, girls basketball as the Connor Chieftains host the Hall Warriors on senior night. Welcome to the Connor Gym, Pete Lammer, along with the coach, John Benier, and our fine Channel 5 crew. The game, a rematch of a classic from 24 days ago, won by Connor, 56-50 at Robinson Gym. Hall rallied from 15 down in the fourth quarter in that one, only to see Connor pull it out in the last minute. Since then, the Warriors haven't lost. They've won four straight, up their mark to 15 and three on the season, while Connor comes in at 16 and three. This game, the finale of the regular season for the Chieftains. Pleased to be working as always with John Benier. And John, if this game is half as exciting as the first matchup, we're in for a great night of hoops. Yeah, we've been really lucky uh, for the, to watch, have watched the last game and last year's as well. They've been really competitive and really well played. Uh, uh, it's uh, coincidentally, it's the first time in 40 years that uh, the Hall girls and the Connor girls are playing for uh, a league championship. Either one of them can win uh, tonight. Um, so, uh, you know, anything can happen. I thought uh, last time the girls from both sides of the floor weren't their sharpest offensively. Um, but they made a, a, a really great game down the stretch. What a roller coaster game that was, John. Here it was tied with about four minutes to go in the third quarter. Turned into the Delaney Connors show. She scored eight points in a row. Team was up 15 going into the fourth quarter. Hall a 15 nothing run to tie. Perhaps they just ran out of energy a little bit down the stretch. Connors won it in the last minute. Couldn't have asked for any more dramatics in that one. No, it was fantastic. Hall, like you said, uh, they, they did a great job. And often teams, you know, emotionally and physically get a little, you know, burnt out. You know, giving getting themselves back in that game and then if they have enough to sustain or enough time to continue to play you know they it could have been uh, the other way but uh, you know hats off to the Chieftains for doing a great job Delaney brought them back like you said um, I'm interested to see how the guards play this evening Great guards on both teams. If you can talk about them a little bit, that would be great. Dynamic backcourt starting for both of these squads. Yeah, Amber Razor, I don't think, uh, as great a player as she is, I don't think she was um, uh, on her game in terms of making baskets so from the perimeter last time. You could say that for the Connor kids as well, but uh, um, I'm hoping that we see some uh, you know, deep threes and some balls thrown, falling through the basket tonight for both sides. That should be interesting, as John talked about. The league title on the line, the CCC Central Blue standings, Glastonbury Hall and Connard all at four and three coming into this one. Glastonbury playing Simsbury tonight. If they lose that contest, the winner of this game wins the league title outright. If not, if Glastonbury wins, whoever wins this contest here in front of us tonight would share the title with Glastonbury. Yeah, so it's not going to break my heart, to be honest, if Glastonbury loses tonight, <laughs> having played those guys in a number of sports. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it would be great if tonight's uh, the game was the only game that really made a, a difference in that league championship. So I'm hoping for that as well. The seniors were honored before the contest here tonight. Marie Cotter and Caroline O'Keefe for the Law Warriors. On the other side of things for Connor, Liz Ladd, who's on her way to Loyola Marymount out in California, and Tatiana St. Just, Lynn University. And she's going to be on the swim team. Pretty good for her. Yeah, some great uh, great student athletes, uh, both going to wonderful places, uh, great, great schools, and I'm sure they're going to do extremely well in whatever they do. The Hall Warriors are going to be first introduced by Bill Watson on the public address. Junior guard, number 10, Lexi Gellerman. At guard, a freshman, number 13, Jenna Zdanowicz. At forward, senior, I'm sorry, at center, a senior, number 30, Captain Caroline O'Keefe. And at forward, a junior, number 12, Maddie Van Dyke. And now, introducing your Connor Chieftains, overall record of 16 and 3, at guard, a junior number 1, Lena Proletti. Junior guard, number 2, Delaney Connors. Senior guard, captain, number 12, Liz Ladd. At forward, a junior, number 15, Maggie Venora. 
And at forward, senior captain, number 23, Tatiana St. Just. Coaching staff for the Warriors, Brittany Huggins, assisted by Liz Stitch, Nick Newman, and Becca Lewis. And your chieftain coaches, head coach Mike D'Angelo, assisted by Alyssa Barrett, Ed Lidos, and Laurie Sosasimo. Your officials this evening, Mr. Sylvester <coughs> Turner, his partner Chris Skelly. And the crowd rising as we get set for the national anthem here at the Connor Gym before the Connor and Hall girls basketball contest. B Sharp Acapella Ensemble. They are Zoe Schaefer, Julia Hardesty, Matt Marino, and Jake LaRosa. Boy, that was that was tremendous. That was the best uh, rendition of the national anthem I've heard in a long time. I agree 100%. Very good. Sylvester Turner and Chris Kelly are the officials for tonight's game. Connard 16 and 3, Hall 15 and 3. And as we talked about the league standings, the CIAC standings coming into this one. John Connard checks in at number six. Paul at number eight, and it looks like 34 teams will qualify for the state tournament with four teams playing in play-in games. And if it were to start right now, it would be Hall taking on South Windsor, Connard against Danbury in the opening round of the CIAC tournament. Yeah, I'm not too sure about the uh, the Danbury team. <laughs> they have a strong sports program down there. It might not be the best draw for them initially, but. Um, you know, I think the girls can make some noise in the tournament. Both groups uh, from Holland County can make some noise in the tournament this year. Definitely so. The War Chief Sports Council would like to thank the many fine sponsors, including those at the all-state level, Heating Insurance, MACA, Plumbing and Heating, Reed and Reed PC, Counselors at Law, ESPN, College Prep Express, and the McConnell Family Law Group. Nice crowd on hand tonight at the Counter Gym. Did you say, John, about 300, 400 or so in here tonight? Yeah, there's not a lot of rooms in the bleachers with people standing outside. It's a great turnout for this game. And we're underway, and quickly the first shot goes to Delaney. Delaney and up and in. Takes her four seconds to give Connor the 2-0 lead. Well, the Chieftains like to run, and they push the ball, just touch it twice, and it was a layup. So if they can continue to do that, I think that's one of their strengths, and um, we'll see. Or Hall will do to stop them from doing that. Delaney Connors, only the fifth Connor player over 700 points for her career. She did that in their most recent victory. Paul's playing a little five out offense, looking to cut uh, di uh, diagonally and <clears throat> into the paint away from the ball. And uh, right now, uh, Connors doing a good job of uh, clogging up the middle so that they can't get passes in. This is Maddie Mandyke. Gets it down low to Zidanowitz. And it goes out of bounds. Jenna Zadanowitz in the starting lineup for Hall, just a freshman. And uh, Brittany Huggins really likes her intensity. Yeah, we were talking earlier about how, how much uh, girls basketball, uh, the quality has improved over the years. And 
to have a freshman playing uh, at this level in a game like this really speaks for the quality of girls basketball. Nice bounce pass underneath, but it's picked off and stolen. O'Keefe with the steal and puts it in the hands of Amber Raisner as Hall moves from right to left as you look at your Channel 5 TV screen. This is a Danowitz. Passes it off to Maddie Mandyke. Thought about the shot, and she slipped and fell, and she's called for steps. So a minute and a half gone by. Opening quarter. 2-0 counter on the Delaney bu Connors bucket. Four seconds in. This is Lena Proietti, the junior point guard. Quite a backcourt with Connors. Pass again stolen. Two consecutive turnovers by the Chieftains, and Hall has to come back the other way. Yeah, a little tentative. They're, you know, they're running their offense um, to the team instead of you know, finding good scoring <laughs> opportunities, which happens early on in games. Matty Mandyke has put Hall on the board and has tied the game at two. Baseline jumper is missed, and the rebound and Hall looking to run. This is a Danowitz, and her pass is intercepted and stolen by Delaney Connors. Connors in transition. The pull-up shot is missed, and it's rebounded by Hall. One thing Brittany Huggins told me on the phone, John Benier, they've been working hard on transition defense, and she says that'll be one of the keys to the game tonight. Well, yeah, earlier I said that uh, Connor likes to run, and you're definitely going to have to get your some people back their feet in the paint to stop any kind of fast break situation for, uh, from the, the Chieftain. Gellerman hitting that long-range three. Five unanswered for the Warriors, and Hall has taken their first lead. It's 5-2. And another three ball is being told by the senior, Liz Ladd. Yeah, We're not, not calling those in a game of yeah, horse, are I they? don't know if she called that one. That's why I go to church on Sunday to get those bank shots in. <laughs> and we're tied at five with three minutes gone by. Right wing shot by Gellerman, missed, rebounded by Connors. Delaney Connors. That's it ahead to Ladd. Back to Connors, off yeah. the give and go, and she's going to be called for steps. Yeah, great give and go. Delaney should have just gone up strong there. She thought she was going to get con uh, her shot contested, um, um, and that didn't happen. Um, so she shuffled her feet a little bit. Sylvester Turner, one of the officials with the call. Tied at five as Raisner has it in the front court. Right side, Raisner. Drives, has an open lane, and lays it up and in. Pretty drive that time by Raisner. Yeah, the defender thought she was going to go off a high ball screen there, and then uh, took a step towards him, got the defender leaning one away, and uh, went baseline hard. Nice move by her. One and done for Connor. Most of their trips down the floor. Reverse move is good. Caroline O'Keefe on the baseline. And yeah. that's given Hall a 9-5 lead. You'd like to see your bigs be able to do that. Just you catch the ball on, uh, in transition on the move and just make a nice little reverse layup. Nice block right there by O'Keefe. So she scores at one end, rejects at the other, and sends her team into transition. There's Van Dyke with the shot, missed the shot, and the rebound to Connor. And they look to run again. This is Benora. Thought about pulling up for the J, instead passes it on the baseline. St. Just kicks it back outside to Proietti. She's guarded there by Raisner. And back outside to Liz Ladd. Last, last game, as I recall, O'Keefe did a great job of uh, uh, con uh, making it difficult for the Chieftains to score inside. She does a great job of playing in, uh, in there, rebounding and, and on offense as well. So the Chieftains will have to try to deal with her the best they can throughout the game. Hall in transition, and that's the Danowitz with the bucket. A 6-0 run for the Warriors, and they've taken their biggest lead, 11-5, with 3-10 to play in the opening quarter. Connor hasn't gotten really into any real kind of organized offense here. It's been transition play, then a quick turnover. So right now they're kind of moving the ball and trying to find some place. Oh, another three. Uh, Long find three, some place no good. To get a good shot opportunity. Lead pass to Zidanowicz, up with the shot, no good, but she's fouled, and she'll get herself to the free throw line. Jenna Zidanowicz, the uh, freshman we were talking about earlier, John, 
Big spark plug for this team, and that's one of the reasons Brittany Huggins has her in the starting lineup. Well, she's doing a great job. She uh, leaked out on the shot, on Connor's shot. She leaked away, and that's two fast break opportunities in a row. Sometimes it seems like Connor or any other team that's a running team, sometimes they're not so great at stopping the same thing. So uh, I think Hall's trying to pick up the pace on their side on offense to force the Chiefs to get back and see what happens. So Danowitz averaging three and a half points, two and a half rebounds per contest. Misses the first, she'll have a second. The foul on Connard was called on Maggie Venora. One of two at the line for Zidanowitz, and it's 12-5. The lead is seven. Connard, three minutes without points. Hall's doing a nice job of keeping the ball uh, and the Connard team on the perimeter for the most part. There's a nice little athletic move by Liz Ladd to finish inside on a give and go. That was a nice entry pass and a nice finish by Ladd. 12-7. Mandyke back the other way. Has the ball stripped and stolen by Peretti. Lena into the front court for Connor. Cross court pass. They go baseline. Venora wide open underneath was St. Just. The running one hander is good. Here's a baby sky hook we saw. Yeah, a nice, another time. nice move by a big for Connor this time. Um, great job of moving the ball and finding each other by Connor that time. Four straight points for the Chieftains, and it's 12-9 Hall. Under two minutes to go here in the opening quarter. This is Raisner. Long range three. It's good. Amber Raisner from downtown, and it's 15 to 9. Yeah, that ball was bringing rain down. I hope it does the sprinklers don't go up in here. That's a mark on it. Beautiful shot. And the block by Hall as Venora's shot was rejected by Maddie Mandyke. There's Raisner the other way. Pull up, jump, off the side of the rim, no good. Van Dyke the rebound, no good, and it's rebounded by Connor. There's Delaney Connors, speeding into the front court, one on three, takes it all the way and misses the shot. And there she was again, Caroline O'Keefe disrupting that shot. Yeah, there's that same thing. Uh, you know, they, sometimes you get again too, a little too deep on a big, a big kid like that. You have maybe take your shot a little sooner and not go right into the big kid's body, which is to their advantage, obviously. Here's Ladd for three. It's no good. Tries to get her own rebound. And the ball goes out of bounds. Good hustle by Liz. Forced a turnover there by scrapping for the ball after her shot. Checking in for so Marie Cotter in for Caroline O'Keefe. As Connor will inbound the ball. Underneath their own basket. Here's Connors with the pull-up shot. Off the back of the rim, no good. And Marie Connor gets the rebound and ends off to Raisner. Good look for Delaney. She gets those shots, you know, frequently throughout the game. She's going to have a nice night. Right side. This is Cotter. Hall in that, that five-out kind of look in that set. You know, cutters, they pass, cut down the, uh, the middle or... If their defenders watch ball watching, they cut. Just some basic good basketball on offense. Pass was intended for Connor, and it goes out of bounds. Siobhan Boyle checking into the game for the Hall Warriors. Number 11, Jillian Haverty replacing. And Jillian Haverty, who head coach Mike D'Angelo calls the fastest high school player he's ever seen in the Connor lineup. She is a tough kid. <laughs> I said this last time. I just love the way her. I love her intensity. I love the way she plays. She scraps, hustles, defends. Saying so just missed the shot. Rebound to Hall. Lead pass ahead. The shot is on the way. It's no good. Missed by Connor. Follow up is no good. And it's rebounded by Connors. Three seconds to go. Here's Delaney into the front court. Here's the shot at the buzzer. No good. And that'll end play here in the first quarter. So a fast start for the uh, Chieftains, but then answered two big runs for Hall, and they have the six-point advantage, John, at the end of one. Yeah, kind of got out right off the bat and, you know, kind of played quickly, and then Hall just upped the ante and played that much more quickly down the, uh, the end of this first period. And uh, I think that might have thrown Connor's timing off a little bit offensively. It tends to do that sometimes. When, you know, when you're on offense and you know the other team's going to run out on you, sometimes that wears in the back of your brain a little bit while you're playing offense. Um, that you know you have to get back. Um, so, I don't know. Uh, they, they've d just recently started to find each other and find some rhythm. Uh, they'll be fine. They'll, they, they just got to continue to find good shots and take them. 
The War Chief Sports Council would like to thank our many fine sponsors, including those at the captain's level, and they include Hartford Distributors, Franklin Fine Beers, Cork and Bottle, the Babe Ruth Organization, Coastal Tool and Rob Ludkin, and the Conard and Hall PTO, and at the all-conference level, Allied Printing. Thanks to one and all for your sponsorship of the War Chief Sports Council. For more info, go to the website, www.war-chief.net. That's war chief Net. Pete Lamoureux, John Benier back with you here at Conard High School. Thanks to our fine Channel 5 crew. Jen back at the studios. The Meredith and Diana here keeping us on the air and on time. 15-9 the score. And we have a held ball and a possession arrow to the Conard Chieftains. And it will be St. Just getting set to inbound the basketball. This is Alina Proietti in the front court, guarded by Zdanowitz, who's back in the game for the Hall Warriors. Pass down low to St. Just, tries to go baseline with the shot, missed it, but she got fouled. Yep, nice aggressive play. Uh, she tried to go strong side on her baseline Each move and then just continued uh, to go a little reverse layup uh, against Hall's 2-3 zones. The first time we've seen that today. Here's Tatiana at the line. And she misses the first. Disrupted a little bit by the uh, Hall kids. who are situated right under the basket here. St. Just averaging 12.6 rebounds per contest this year. Missed two, but the rebound to Connors goes yep. up with a shot. She missed it. Yeah, go strong. The Hall player got a piece of it as she went up and forced the miss. But great, great rebound by Delaney. So Hall again it. opens the floor up a little bit, passing and cutting down the lane. A little ball screen. Razor does a good job of getting to the hole, but couldn't Mid have come away with it. Missed the shot. Here's Connors the other way with the shot. And are they going to call an offensive foul on that? Offensive foul is charged to Delaney. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna, ask, I'm gonna ask not Coach Benier, but referee Benier. Well, well, you're calling um, that. Yeah, no, I don't think that was. A, uh, she was uh, the angle she was running at, and you know, it was a nice flop, of course, um, which uh, you have to do when selling a, uh, a play like that. But no, I didn't, I, I didn't agree with that call. Raisner in the front court. And again, Amber averaging 16 points, three and a half assists per contest this year for this Hall squad. All team was lost five straight games to Connor. Long range three is no good. And they're gonna call a Hall player for over the back. Yeah, it looked like Shabon Boyle was trying to rebound it and just got a piece of, <laughs> piece of the back of the Connor, uh, Connor player. Raisner gets a rest. Olivia Boney checks in. Checking in for the Bears, number 34, Olivia Bundy. Talk about a game with very few foul calls, just two apiece so far in the opening 10 minutes of this first half. Yeah, there's been a lot of plays in transition. They haven't been banging around inside or driving too, too much to the basket where you get some of those fouls. This is Gellerman in the front court. Zidanowitz swings it to Boyle. Shabon drives and misses the shot, and the rebound to St. Just gets it ahead to Proietti. She's one on three. She pulls up for a foul line jump, is short, but the rebound goes to Connor. Down the lane goes Proietti, and she's called for steps. And the yeah. look on her face, she doesn't agree with that call. Yeah, I, I think I agree with that call. She, she kind of bumped into someone with the ball, and um, I don't think it was a foul situation that time. It's been aggressive. Amber Raisner, Amber Raisner, John, she had 30 seconds on the bench. She's back in the couch. Well, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sit her too long either. <laughs> Still looking for our first points of the second quarter. Hall led 59 at the quarter. That's the score right now with 5.54 to go in the opening half. Three ball from the left side is missed by Gellerman, and the weak side rebound goes to Connor. Connor's long pass ahead to Haverty. Left side shot to Rainbow, arcing shot, it's no good, and it's rebounded by Gellerman. 
Nice job to find Ladd on the opposite corner that, after that baseline drive by Hadley. Gellerman's pull-up jump hits the back of the eye or no good. I think the scoreboard's stuck. I, I'm yeah. not sure. I know it. There's Connors from the left wing. No good. Zidanowicz clears the rebound. Ahead to Raisner in transition. Dribbles it off her foot. And St. Just comes back the other way. Tatiana's one on three. Pulls up for the jump. It's no good. And the rebound. Maddie Mandyke loses it out of bounds. The officials come together. And it'll be Hall basketball. It's been a lot of transition stuff, a lot of a lot of shots, perimeter shots. Uh, both teams are doing a decent job of shutting any kind of inside scoring opportunities down right now. So both are settling for those more difficult shots. They've also challenged some drives to the basket, both ways. How about Tatiana? I'm just singling her out, but there's been a couple of times where they've been one on three and they pulled up with the jump with yeah. no opportunity to have any rebounds. Yeah, a little bit quick, I think, both teams. Um, Hall's been doing a little bit better job of running their half-court set, um, but yeah, I think they need to make a pass or two more before they uh, shoot the ball that quick from that far out. John, you're a veteran of the hall Connor Wars over three decades worth. I mean, is it still jitters a quarter and a half in at this point? Um... You know, I, I think individually kids sometimes try to do more than they really need to do to win this Her game against Hall. Coaches Jesus. always, you know, tell them that it's just another game. You, you got to win the game and forget about who you're playing. That's really hard for kids to do sometimes. Oh, absolutely. Raisner and Gellerman. Dynamic oh. Hall backcourt. Oh. And Lexi's call for steps. Coach Hug is not happy about her not going baseline. She, again, tried to do a little bit more with that ball screen than she could have and should have. She had the whole baseline open to her. They called that clear for her last time, uh, last period rather, where she faked over the, to use the screen and then went baseline hard. That's a nice little uh, individual two-on-two -two play for Hall. Lenora back outside for Eddie. This is Connors. Two, Ready three. with the drive, her pass though, intercepted. Here's Raisner ahead of the field, and she's practically tackled as she goes up for the layup, and she'll go to the line. Yeah, Connor right now trying to find a place to score in that 2-3 zone that Hall's playing, and uh, like we said earlier, we may have to pass the ball, probe a little bit, you know, see who we can find inside, how they're gonna play and react. So Raisner at the line. And she hits the first. Amber's had many big games this year, including her season high 33 against Sellington earlier this year. And she hits another. The first two points of the second quarter took four minutes and eight seconds. All up 17-9 with 3.45 to play. There you go. Driving shot, and it's good and a foul. Maggie Venora, the junior, able to connect and get herself to the line, trying for an old-fashioned three-point play. Yeah, nice job. She uh, Again, she didn't go all the way into the, the, the defender. She took a little jump hook uh, just outside uh, the, the, the block and banked it in. Nice, aggressive play. Misses the foul shot. And DeLaurier in the contest for Hall had the rebound. Here's Gellerman in the front court for the Warriors. 17-11 with three and a half to play until halftime. Raisner picks up her dribble. Here's Mandyke, kicks it back outside. Gellerman, a baseline shot, she missed it, an air ball, turns into a pass underneath. And O'Keefe controls and she got fouled. Yeah, they missed the first one on the jumper, I think. Uh, I didn't see who took that on the baseline, but she got whacked pretty good on the back. But uh, they, they, they came away with a foul, so we'll see if they can convert here. Peretti with the personal foul, her second personal. And the fifth team foul. And Caroline O'Keefe misses the first at the line. Liz Ladd returning for Connor. One of the first rests of the night for Lena Proietti, replaced in the counter lineup by Liz Ladd. Yeah, it's been a pretty fast-paced game, actually, uh, for both teams. Um, it's going to definitely settle down, I would imagine, as we're going, somewhat. 
Um, and then Akana's running down fast breaks. They're going to have to see when they have a fast break situation and when they don't. Like right now, Hall's back in their 2-3 zone, which has been giving Connor a little bit of pause. Um, so now they're just kind of probing a little bit. There's a flash to the middle by Capone. Well done. Yeah, Abigail Capone in the game for the first time. There's a drive by Connors. The Hall faithful thought that she got all ball that time, but a foul is going to be called. Yep, she can't. Aggressive move to the basket. I mean, I would just for me, I would love them to take the pull up and shoot a, a shot or take a layup a little bit further away from those kids. And the first for Delaney Connors is good. It's hard for kids to do that, however, because your coaches are asking them, hey, let's take it to the rim, you know, and how far to the rim. Sometimes that can be a, a, a tough decision. One of two for Connors, and the rebound to Gellerman. 17-12 the score. It's been a bit of a drought for the, right when I say that, oops, I thought I was going in for Hall. Connor to slowly creep in back. Well, Connor, Connor's outscored him 3-2 in the second quarter, and we played five and a half minutes. This is Capone. Nice cross-court pass. Here's the drive by Connors. Misses the shot. The rebound is back tapped and controlled by Hall. And here they come into the front court. DeLaurier kicks it back outside to O'Keefe. DeLaurier's three is good. Olivier DeLaurier, another Hall freshman, hits from downtown, and it's 20 to 12. Great job for Olivia. She's, uh, she's going to be a nice player for Hall down the road. Good genes. I coached her father years ago. Oh, nice. Another West Hartford basketball connection for sure. Pass underneath. Turnaround shot is no good. Venora missed the shot. And O'Keefe cleared the rebound, and here's Reisner bringing it across midcourt. A buck and a half to play here in the opening half. All trying to get their lead into double digits for the first time. Amber Raisner with the drive. As she's cheered on by her coach, Brittany Huggins, yeah, right good in front aggressive of us. play. Good aggressive play. You know, why not? You know, see what happens. Uh, you know, the ref will reward you for making an aggressive move to the basket. Why not? Chile and Haverty picked up the foul. Her second. That's the team's sixth non-shooting foul. So Delorier will put it in play for Hall underneath their own basket. Good, def good defense by Venora just then oh, they, uh, to deny that ball inbounds. They almost came away with a steal right there for Connor. Amber Raisner pulls up for the shot and hits. What a tough move by Raisner. Wow. Yeah, she shook her a little bit. The crowd reacted. They love that stuff nowadays. <laughs> uh, and she uh, stuck the, the long jumper. Nice job. Hall's lead in double digits, 22-12. And trying to answer is Venora, and she got hacked in the act. Yep, nice cut. First they need to do a little bit more of that against uh, Hall's time man time. in their zone the defenses, I think. Um, they'll probably get rewarded with some catches a little bit closer to the basket. So the foul is on Mandy. And Venora hits the first. Maggie averaging 6.7 rebounds and three steals per game, so she does a little bit of everything. For first-year head coach Mike D'Angelo. And the second is good. And it's 22-14 with a minute to play here in the opening half. Raisner picked up by Proietti. Right side, Gellerman. Nice job playing that pick and roll. Long range three is short, but Hall gets the weak side rebound. Yeah. Another shot from deep is no good. And it's rebounded by Connor. And here's Connors in transition. Delaney, pull up jump on the way. It's too long. Rebound is fought for. And a foul is going to be called. You can see the frustration on Delaney Connors' face. She's not used to missing multiple shots like this. Yeah, she's had a tough uh, couple uh, drives to the basket that we talked about earlier. It came up a little short, maybe a little too close in. Um, we, she's a scorer. She has to have a very, very short memory. Continue to look for next, the next shooting opportunity. Sure. That's her job. 
Second opportunity for Connor. Everyone want, wanted to travel on that one. Shot is missed by Liz Ladd and rebounded by Mandy. 10 seconds to go. Raisner in the open floor, misses the shot, but she drew contact and will get to the line. Yeah, she's just, she looks like she's got a little bit of a bounce in her step, a little bit more confidence. Really, her pace going to the basket in the last three times or so has been really faster than she's been. She's got some confidence. So here's Amber at the line. And she misses the first. Free throw shooting, John, not stellar on both sides. Though. Yeah, it's been a little ugly. I mean, a pace can do that to you. Maybe they're not taking enough time to set themselves at the line. They're breathing a little hard. One of two, 23-14. Here's Connors. Makes the shot with a second to go. And that's the way the first half will end, 23-16, as we go to the break, John. Yeah, nice job uh, by Connor. Uh, all had a couple, no, made a couple aggressive plays and scored to stretch that lead out again. But you know they're right in the ball game. You know they're they're fine. Both teams are doing a pretty good job. So Hall outscores Connor eight seven in the second quarter after having a 15-9 advantage in the first. And again, your score at the break, it is Hall 23 and Connor 16. The War Chief Sports Council would like to thank our many fine sponsors, including those at the varsity level, Low Tide Photography, Blue Plate, Dave Newman Photography, Fast Eddie, West Hartford Youth Basketball, West Hartford Travel Boys Basketball, The Open Arm Christian Ministries, Final Cut Barbershop, Edward Connors Insurance, Stanley and Elaine Phillips, Beth Barry Brown of the William Ravis Agency, and West Hartford Girls Lacrosse. Thanks to one and all for your sponsorship of the War Chief Sports Council. And for more information, go to their website at www.war-chief.net. John Benny and I will come back with second half action, but we're going to step aside. Again, you scored the break. It is Hall 23, Connor 16. More on Channel 5 right after this. Your attention, ladies and gentlemen, the War Chief Sports Council is proud to announce that in association with their sponsors and West Hartford Community Television, Tonight's game is being broadcast live on Channel 5 and can also be accessed via the internet from anywhere in the world. It is also accessible to the game via smartphones. You can access the game via the live Channel 5 link on the WHCT website. Finally, DVDs are available for purchase with a $20 donation via the War Chief Sports Council website. The proceeds support WHCTV, the War Chief Sports Council, and future broadcasts. The War Chief Sports Council is the official booster club of Hall and Connor Athletics. For more information, please contact www.war-chief.net. That is www.war-chief.net. Lastly, the game will be rebroadcast on Channel 5 on February 25th at 9 o'clock p.m.
Caverty start in the second half instead of leaving. Okay. And before we start the second half, I want to tell you about the uh, boys' action, the Hall uh, boys, eight and nine, and they qualify for the CIAC tournament. So congratulations to Brian Moretti and company. Hall at Bristol Eastern tomorrow before the Warriors back at Robinson Gym Friday night to host Southington at 6:45. Conard boys, three and 13, they'll host Plainville tomorrow night at 6:45. Hall at Conard boys action on Tuesday, February 21st. That's a week from tomorrow. They'll tip that one at 11 in the morning. Nice to be able to do that during the February vacation. Our next broadcast will be swimming. It'll be next Tuesday, the 21st. We'll be at the Aquatic Center for that one. 7.30 is the time of that meet between Hall and Opening the third quarter, the Warriors take first possession. I'd like to ask you to text 143 WHC TV to 41444 to donate $5 tonight in support of the game and also to show your support and love of sports on TV on Channel 5. So certainly a worthwhile cause. Try to help out our friends at Community Television. It's a drive by Raisner. No good. They battle for the loose ball on the floor, and it's a held ball. Oh, yeah, there's that high ball screen where she oh. pretend, she tries to come up uh, or shows like she's coming over the top of it towards the midcourt and then quickly goes baseline. That's a great little set for those guys. 23-16 the score. Hall led 15-9 at the quarter. They outscored Connor 8-7 in the second for a seven-point advantage as we start play here in the third with seven and a half to play here in the third stanza. Connors dribbles the ball off her leg and out of bounds, and it'll go back to Hall. Yeah, good move right away by Coach uh, to put two of his better scorers filling in that foul line area against that zone, and both of them caught the ball turn and uh, attacked. It's a, a good strategy. Is that one of the best ways, John, to uh, attack a zone? Like I, I think, I mean, I always like to have a kid that could catch the ball in the foul line area and either shoot it or, or, or fake and, and drive to the basket. You know, they either get a foul or they can kick it out to a shooter. It makes things happen in, in the interior of a zone a lot faster. So Danowitz connecting for that last three. Hall back up 10, matching their largest lead of the night at 26-16. Air ball by Connor goes out of bounds, and it'll be Hall basketball. John, this game is eerily similar to the hall Connor matchup on this floor a year ago when Hall got off to the fast start controlled for much of the game and then in the fourth quarter kind of wore down as Connor came back to win yeah yeah i agree it um it, obviously we have yet to see what they're going to do off on offense back and forth um but you know they're not they're not far from um you know finding their stride and you know they're doing good things the last two times against the zone they just got to put some balls in the basket Pass from Mandyke to Gellerman. She can't finish. And the rebound to Connard. And here's Maggie Venora down the right sideline. St. Just has the basketball for the Chieftains. There's the drive by Ladd. It's no good. 
And they're going to say a Hall player touched it while it's on the baseline, so it'll stay countered basketball. Yeah, it looks like both coaches are asking, probably asked their kids to be a little bit more aggressive with their dribble to the basket instead of settling like we talked about um, at the end of the second half, uh, or during the second half, rather. So, you know, we'll see if they continue to be aggressive with their dribble to the basket. The senior captain, St. Just, with the first countered basket of the second half. And the Chieftains backed with an 8, 26-18. Gellerman's shot off the left side of the rim, no good. And the rebound to St. Just, and she hands off to Connors. Here's Delaney Connors speeding into the front court. Hands off to St. Just. Foul line jump is good. Two in a row for Tatiana, and it's 26-20. Yeah, Tatiana needed that. Uh, I think as, as someone like Delaney as well, they need to, you know, drop one in and then just get a little confidence and build on that. The Hall girls, especially on the perimeter, look like they have a lot of energy attacking the basket. They know what they want to do. Um, the Connor girls need to find that same confidence. Gellerman missed the shot. Chieftains with the rebound. Connors for three. Rims the basket, no good. Mandyke hits the rebound for Hall. Here's Raisner directing traffic for the Warriors. Left side to Zidanowitz. Jenna drives, kicks it to O'Keefe for the shot. It's short, rebounded to Venora. All the way with the shot, she missed it. And the Warriors go back the other way. Here's Raisner ahead of the field. She lays it up, no good, but she's fouled from behind. Delaney Connors, Hacker, and Amber Raisner go to the free throw line. Yeah, a hard foul going to the basket right there. Uh, Venora just checked out. Looks like she lost a uh, contact. Um, but you know, Venora, she lost her footing there. It just seemed like, and then uh, you know she's going to go hard to the basket every time she gets it. Oh, absolutely. So here's Raisner at the line. Missed the first. Amber Raisner, the only player on either side in double figures. She has 10. You know, they're quiet 10. Players like her score p points all throughout the game and then in bunches from time to time um and i'm you know i'm pretty confident it looks like she's going to score bunches tonight at some point just missed two at the line Look. connor's the other way and she's called for steps you know i like what she did though she she made that nice strong drive and then she tried to come to a jump stop she just got her feet her timing messed up a little bit you know instead of just running to the basket and trying to get a shot off she's actually playing this against her hard. defender by coming to that jump stop, seeing what she's going to do um, so good for her, good mindset going through the basket. Chris Kelly, one of our officials tonight, made that call. Travel before the shot. Oh, foul before the shot. So the officials got together and changed their call a little bit there. Yeah, there you go. Looks like we're looking for contact a contact points? lens right yeah. now. Yeah, you had the good pickup uh, a minute or two ago. It was Maggie Venora, I think, wasn't it? It was Maggie, yeah. yeah. Oh, so as they goes. continue to search, the this gives us an opportunity to Sports congratulate the Hall Indoor the Track Team winning winning the state title over the weekend, John. The first time they've done Jenna that Hall. in 62 years. You have to go back all the way to 1955. It is also accessible and, uh, via your smartphone. Really, really you awesome accomplishment for them. You know, we've had, uh, I don't know if people know this or not, but we've had outstanding athletes that have gone on uh, and, and done a great job in, at the collegiate level for quite a time now uh, maybe not enough of them to do what they just accomplished but their track program here has been really strong and you know continues to grow uh, the coaches here and the, and the community should be really proud of them they do a great great job and they're going to get stronger I know the eighth graders at least at Sedgwick there's a number of them that are very strong uh, runners now just that's what they do they run uh, so there's, you know, they're going to reload again. I'm sure just coming down the road. Good feeder system, obviously. Yeah, you know, and you know, soccer too for a lot of kids it gets them going as, as little ankle biters. They're running around, and that when the ball skill thing in soccer doesn't work out for them, they're still running and very fit kids, and it's an easy transition for them to run track. Oh, good point. Very good point. Having Play back on. Is that ball screen? She goes baseline again. Uh, a little and bit of a walk. Kellerman. Call for steps. 
by the official, Sylvester Turner, right in front of him. If I were Conard, I would try to let them play, let that girl drop on the baseline side, not let her drive baseline, let her go over the top. Um, and I don't think they look to shoot, unless it's Raisner, they haven't looked to shoot jumpers off that screen, you know, just so they don't get beat baseline. Saying just with the drive, and she got fouled. So from the Connor perspective, the good third thing that Tatiana's come second. to play here in the third quarter. She's been a one-man wrecking crew. Yeah, again, a nice okay. strong drive to the basket. They're doing a great job. Instead of settling, they're taking it to the hole, coming up with some, uh, some points from the foul line instead of jumping. That's her fifth point of the third quarter alone. Yeah, she has seven overall. She leads all chieftains in that regard. And if she can hit another, she'd bring her team to within four. No good. And the rebound to Raisner. 26-21, fall by five, 4-10 to play here in the third quarter. Raisner left side. Watched by Connors. Long range three off the side of the rim. No good. And Delaney Connors speeds back with the rebound. Oops. Stripped and stolen, and there's that little spark plug, Zidanowitz again. Yeah, nice hand, tipping it away. Raisner for Gellerman in the front court. Now Zidanowitz back up top. Here comes that ball screen. And Raisner's fouled by Capone. I, you know, I don't, well, obviously you got a little bit uh, excited about trying to steal that ball. You know, if she comes off that ball screen high, um, there's less danger sure. she can do um, uh, unless she shoots it. I mean, she's a pretty good shooter, but for the rest of them, I might just be satisfied to let them go over that ball screen high, take away the low drive. And that last foul, John, 20 feet from the basket. Yeah, it's not the best foul. Here's Raisner. Mandyk with the drive. She used the left hand and just couldn't finish. But she goes up strong, gets her own rebound, yeah, and is fouled nice. from behind. Great nice. play by Mandyk. Absolutely. Nice strong move, and then she just stayed with it, and rebounded it, and got fouled. Delaney Connor. She's Delaney called by some on the uh, Hall sidelines as the MVP of this Hall Warrior team, Maddie Mandyk. And that was an MVP play right there for sure. Five seconds for oh, Yeah, that was, uh, that was just good coaching right there. They scouted that out of bounds play and shut every, uh, every they played off and switched on every uh, screen. They did a great job. Good preparation there. Left wing three is too strong. Rebounded by Mandyke. Zananowitz gets it to Raisner. She's got Gellerman ahead of the field. Spins on the baseline short with the shot. Gets her own rebound and is called for steps. Uh, Coach Huggins wanted a foul there on the initial contact on the drive. Um, didn't get it. Um, Connor and both teams being very physical on the boards, uh, both ends. 26-21. Ball's lead is five. Three minutes to play here in the third quarter. Hall back in their 2-3 zone. Connor's in the middle again. Pass is tipped. Loose at midcourt, and Priority scoops it up for Connor. Her pass, though, almost intercepted. And a timeout call by Mike D'Angelo to save his uh, player from a travel. Yeah, yeah. A little frenetic right there, but um, Coach bailed him out. Um, there, a little bit of a lackadaisical pass by Tatiana across the middle. Um, they just need to be a little bit more organized at that, at that point. But not bad, not bad. The War Chief Sports Council would like to thank our many fine sponsors, including those at the all-state level, and they include Keating Insurance, MACA, Plumbing and Heating, Reed and Reed PC, Counselors at Law, ESPN, the Entertainment and Sports Programming Network, College Prep Express, and the McConnell Family Law Group. Thanks to one and all for your sponsorship of the War Chief Sports Council. Pete Lamoureux, John Benier, and our fine Channel 5 crew, at the Conard High School Gymnasium on senior night. Second of two matchups on the season. Conard won the first one 56-50 and Hall trying to gain their revenge here tonight. Baseline shot by St. Just is no good. Gellerman on the rebound for the Warriors. Lexi in the front court, passes left side. This is Raisner. Hall again, very deliberate 
a lot of times tonight in their half court sets over the last quarter and a half or so. Mandyke tried to uh, have a combination shot pass there, yeah. and it's knocked out of bounds. She yeah. had a little indecision, John, didn't she? Yeah, she did, she did. Uh, did a nice job of making a back cut off that screen. Cajal uh, passes and cuts, and then the opposite, uh, opposite person either comes high off the screen or, just like on their ball screen, if you play over the top of the screen too early, they back cut, and that's what they just did. Pretty pass right there, and the finish by Gellerman. Off the feed from O'Keefe, 28-21. Proietti's shot is short, rebounded by Hall. Raisner looking to run. Nice bounce pass, shot is up and good. Mandyke with the finish for Hall. 30-21. Proietti, a nice pass down low. St. Just with a shot is blocked by O'Keefe. The follow is up and in. Panora with a nice finish. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't really see the play. It looked like there was a little contact to St. Juice. I uh, got screened, but Maggie did a nice job of finishing that up with a strong rebound. 30 to 23. Ball by seven. 85 seconds to go yeah. here in the third quarter. Ball is loose and a steal by Potter. Panora again with good hands. And the finish and by Delaney Connors. Yeah, two passes and a layup for Connor. Way to push the ball. 30 to 25, two quick hoops, and the nine point deficit for the home team is down to five with a minute to play here in the third quarter. Here's that high ball screen. And a steal by Venora. Beautiful pass and they can't finish. Great job pushing the ball. You need to, uh, Chieftains need to make that bucket there to close the gap a little bit, obviously. Three ball, high arcing shot is no good. They battle underneath and Mandyke comes away with it for Hall. Raisner a long three, it's short. Rebounded by Hall. Third opportunity on this offensive sequence. Beautiful pass underneath, the shot is up and good by O'Keefe from Mandyke. What a pass. Yeah, nice job finding a teammate. Uh, Connor got caught watching the ball on the opposite side and uh, Paul did a great job of finding each other there. Three seconds to go. O'Keefe shot at the buzzer is no good. And that's the way the third quarter ends. So a good seesaw exchange there. Connor with a mini run, and then Hall with a couple of buckets, and they have the seven-point lead going to the fourth. Yeah. We're often in Buffalo every player of the game because the pace is that frenetic. Yeah, they're both, I mean, both teams. So. Connor's been really battling on the boards and, and really challenging each other physically, or challenging Hall physically for every ball. Hall's doing the same scrapping, chipping balls away. Um, and there's it's still just a seven point game. Kyle was close to closing the gap. They missed a couple layups. It could be a two or three point game right now. But um, you know, if they're, they're going to continue that kind of play, before you know it, could be just that two or three point game. Sure. So 32 25, Hall in front after three. Both teams scored nine points in that third quarter. Hall's lead was seven at the half, and it'll be seven to start play here in the fourth quarter. Connard again coming into this game, 16 and three. This is their regular season finale tonight. They're sixth in the class double L. Hall is eighth at 15 and three. And both teams will be likely favorites through two rounds of the upcoming CIAC State Tournament. And again, on the line here tonight, the CCC Central Blue title. Glastonbury, Hall, and Connard, all four and three starting action tonight. Glastonbury taking on Simsbury. The winner of this game will do no worse than share the league title, John. Yeah, we already talked about Glastonbury losing tonight, so I don't want to belabor that point. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like to think that this game is going to choose, uh, determine rather, the uh, league champ. Let's hope it does. Raisner. Raisner hits the shot, and it's 34-25. Amber now has a dozen. Good defense on the baseline by Hall. Lead pass to Amber Raisner in the front court. Didn't have an angle, so she backs it back out. This is Zdanowitz working against Ladd. Raisner watched by Connors. That's an all-conference matchup for sure. There's their little pass. Here's a high ball screen. She's a Pretty pass down low. Shot is no good. 
but Marie Cotter will get to the free throw line off the great feed from Raisner. Yeah, if Connor can in, play, in playing that, that high ball screen, if they can stay on and without switching or doubling the ball like they did, they didn't communicate all that well on that last play, um, it will benefit them a lot. And the shot is missed. Haggerty replacing his lad. Haggerty in for Ladd. Delorier in the hall lineup. And Marie Cotter, the senior captain. Misses two, and St. Just grabs the rebound. Boy, foul shooting continues to be a struggle for both teams. Yeah, and a three ball Laney from the left Laney wing Laney is good. Laney There's Laney Delaney Cotter. Obviously, Mike D'Angelo needs her to get red hot in this fourth quarter, John. Yeah, Bray did a great job of finding her. She just had great timing on that jumper. You never know, you get a little confidence and scores a they can put some ball, uh, balls in the basket in a hurry. Van Dyke's pass is kicked by Proretti, so it'll stay Hall basketball. Minute 10 gone by, fourth and final quarter. Hall has had two different leads of 10 tonight. They lead by six right now, 34-28. Great job by Proretti breaking up that play and then starting the break. And great job by Raisner in transition defense. Uh, exactly. Great hustle. great hustle. Great hustle. We talked earlier how Brittany Huggins had said that priority one was the transition defense. Oh, great example of doing that. Uh, looked, it looked like for sure that Haberty was going to score a layup there, but Razor came back and broke up the play. And just thought about the shot. Instead, she hit the cutting Venora, who missed the shot. Here's Gellerman in the front court for Hall. Amber Raisner, top of the circle, drives on Connors. Bounce pass to Gellerman, thought about the shot and passed it up. And a good job. Wow. Maggie Venora with the hustle play. And thank God she's got a smile on her face. Wow. Who said the sidelines in basketball aren't dangerous, John? Pass into the backcourt. I would not want to get hit by Venora. No. Coach is calling for motion. They do a nice little diagonal or a curl cut coming from the other side of the court. It's a pass and cut, it's a pass and cut kind of offense. But if people aren't paying attention on the other Lacking side of the ball, they kind of cut to, say just. to the ball and through the middle a little bit Here and see how well Connor's going to defend them. Tough thing to defend. Sure. St. Just with the foul. Inbounded to Mandyke. This is Raisner. Guarded by Connors. Maddie Mandyke. Raisner's three from the right side is good. High arc and drive back to fall. That was deep. Those are like two steps behind. It she was. was just feeling it on that one. 37 28. 15 now for Raisner after that three ball. She's one point off her average. Mandyke's baseline shot is no good, and it's rebounded by Connor. Here's Haverty. Goes all the way with the shot. No good. But a blocking foul against Lexi Gellerman. And there's that speed on display by Haverty. Mike yep. D'Angelo says she's the fastest high school kid he's ever seen. Yeah, she's she did a great so made a great awesome. decision about taking that ball hard to the basket. And and she just right. did and got rewarded for um, making that aggressive play. Let's see if she can knock these down. And she missed the first. One key factor here for Hall, John. That was only their second team foul of the entire second half. Yeah, they've done a nice job of defending Connor. And Connor, too, on the other hand, as, you know, they kind of stopped uh, taking it to the basket. Initially, when this period started, they were really attacking with their dribble. But in the last couple minutes, they really haven't done that as frequently. 37-29, fall by eight, 5.15 to go in regulation time. Deep three by the freshman Delorier is no good. And here comes Venora back the other way for the Chieftains. Bounce pass to Delaney Connors. Here's Proietti. Connors three. 
short, oh. and off the side of the rim, no good. Gellerman. Ball knocked out of bounds, last touch by Hall. It's going to be Connor basketball. It was a little, Delaney's close. I mean, that was straight and short, and it almost bounced up and rattled in there. She's not far from finding that stroke of her. So she's got to keep positive and keep looking to score the ball. Nice move by uh, Tatiana. Just couldn't get it to fall. She did everything but get it to yeah, fall. Yeah, yeah. And here's Raisner for the Warriors. All the way with the shot. It's off the glass and good. She now has 17 and the lead back into double digits for the third time tonight. Hall matching their biggest lead. 39-29. Four and a half to play. Tatiana with the open shot. She missed it. Ooh. Potter goes for the rebound. They can't control it. Yeah, Knock tough bounce for Liz. Tatiana took that one a little bit quick for her. Those guys just, just get their feet underneath them and find their rhythm and just stick that thing. Grayson looks very confident right, uh, right now. Eyes up, uh, being aggressive with her dribble. Good block on the defensive end. A hell of a ball. There are bodies flying all over the place out there. Oh, sure, really. All the players on both sides. <laughs> can tell it's all Connor, can't you? Oh, yeah. And a foul is going to be called as Lena Poirietti got hacked. Don't you love that reaction of Zdanowicz chucking in oh, here right in front of us? She can't wait to get in. She charges to the uh, scorer's table. Yes. Shooting a deuce. The foul on Caroline O'Keefe, her third. Delaney Connors and Proietti have three, so those are the three players on both sides combined in foul trouble. Shot was missed. And a foul on the baseline. So right now, without overstating the obvious, uh, we've got to find ways, Connor does rather, to, you know, get some quality shots. It looks like Coach is going to get up into them defensively right now, full court pressure of some sort. And then uh, if we don't have a break, we've got to come away with something. We just missed a couple easy baskets. Those will fall, but, you know, we've got to find a way, if it's not a fast break, to, to find something that we can get quality looks at the basket with. Raisner gets fouled. It's a good set for them. They open the floor up for Razor up top, and if she can go one-on-one, -on -one, she's probably got the green line. And if not, then she passes the ball, and then the rest of them start getting involved in passing, cutting, using screens. And the foul on Delaney Connors, John, her fourth. And Razor misses the foul shot. Yeah, she was hacked in the act. I'm sorry, John. So that's she's going to the line anyways, but that's now the 17th foul for Connor. So they're going to be at the line the rest of the way. Right. They need to make their foul shots to put the game away. Right. And they got a long way to go at the other side um, with only three team fouls. Biggest lead of the night for Hall, 11, 40, 29. Connor misses the shot, and here's Zidanowitz in transition, and she's going to pull it out. Heady play by the freshman to pull it out and use some clock. Right now, Connor's going to be in a big hurry to make stops and score baskets, so Hall oh, has to really take care of the ball and find good opportunities to score, use the clock a bit. Great steal that time by Venora. Yep. And it gives her team the basketball back. Down to 3-11 in the fourth quarter. Long shot by Connors is good. Came into this one with 25 threes on the year, and she adds to that total right there. Yeah, about uh, last game, about with about five minutes to go, I think she started dropping some baskets, and hopefully she has enough time to close the gap here a little bit. Eight-point advantage for Hall. O'Keefe with the shot. It's short. Big rebound underneath. No good, but a foul. 
What hustle by Gellerman to get position underneath for that offensive rebound. Yep, uh, was uh, pretty disciplined on that last possession. Um, a couple kids had an opportunity to score the ball. Chose not to, to find someone else to pass to. A decent shot and a good rebound. And Gellerman misses again. I don't mean her in particular, but the team. Yeah, it's been not been a free throw shooting clinic tonight from either team. Nah. And another miss. And Connard staying in this game because of the hall difficulty at the free throw line. Three ball by Proretti. Rims the basket out. Venora goes for the rebound, but she knocked it out of bounds. And it will be Hall basketball. Nice look by Lena. The ball was all over the rim. Just didn't drop for her. And that full court pressure by the Chieftains. And now they drop back. Eight point lead for Hall. And Brittany Huggins off the bench asking for a timeout with 2.12 to play here in the contest. The War Chief Sports Council would like to thank our sponsors at the captain's level. Hartford Distributors, Franklin Fine Beers, Cork and Bottle, the Babe Ruth Organization, Coastal Tool and Rob Ludkin, and the Connard and Hall PTO, as well as the all-conference sponsor, Allied Printing. Thanks to one and all for your sponsorship of the War Chief Sports Council. And a reminder that if you're watching this game live, we'll have the rebroadcast for you on Saturday night, February 25th on Channel 5 at 9 o'clock. And our next live broadcast, one week from tomorrow night, February 21st, will be at the Aquatics Center for the Hall and Connard Swim Meet, a first ever on Channel 5 TV. Wow. Trying to get all the kids involved, there John. We did, we did wrestling last week. That's perfect. Yeah, good, good field you, hockey, guys. soccer, lacrosse, you name it. We're even trying to get Steve Blanchfield and the Connor boys tennis team on the air this perfect. year. So. You know, it's, it's a great thing you do here. Um, to just highlight and, and showcase some of the, the great things that our coaches and our athletes are doing in town here. It's wonderful for the kids to see themselves as well. Um, it just builds a lot of pride and you know, even the rivalry a little bit. Sure. It's a great thing. Hats off to Channel 5. Hats off to Paul McConnell and Dennis Swanton at the War Chief Sports Council. It was their idea, and uh, they've certainly followed through in a big way. So after the timeout, 40 to 32 Hall, 210 to play in regulation time as Mandyke gets set to inbounds the basketball for Hall. Good defense. Give and go like, with Gellerman. Good defense that time but a better move to the basket and yeah. a foul. Yeah, we got called. We have to watch our fouls, obviously, because they're shooting in the, the double uh, bonus. Oh, one on one, excuse me. Prieti committing her fourth personal. Um, so Prieti's fourth, so the uh, dynamic duo in the backcourt for Connor, each with four. Yeah, they're going to have to be smart. I don't know whether or not um, they can have a different matchup playing those guards. They might be the best people to play them, but obviously they've got to be smart. And, Hall, Hall's going to move the ball around, but every once in a while, I'm sure Grace is going to make them, uh, you know, play her, and they have to be smart about how they do that. One of two for Matty Mandyke. 41-32. Two minutes flat to play here in the fourth quarter. Here's the drive by St. Just. Good and a foul. That's what Mike D'Angelo wants. Basket. Three-point opportunity. Basket. And a clock stop. Yeah, I was a little concerned when they started that set. There was five people out. Um, and I was thinking they were going to settle for a jumper, but Tatiana made the smart play of attacking the basket and going strong. Her fourth. Fourth foul on Same Caroline choice. O'Keefe. Yeah, another stall where, uh, on, in the interior uh, defensively for Hall. She uh, would be sorely missed if she gets her fifth. St. Just misses the foul shot. Gellerman gets the rebound. Big quality minutes tonight for Zidanowitz for Hall, and why not? She's deserved it. She played really, really well. Raisner with the drive off the glass and goes. Nice little Euro step for the two for the basket. Great job by Raisner. She has 20, 43, 34. And there's an answer at the other end. 
for Liz Ladd. And it's 43-37, right back to within six, and they make it a two-possession game and a timeout with 91 seconds to go. Yeah, good for Liz. I'm, uh, Liz, I'm glad for a big bucket. Like you said, it brings them right back in the game. A minute and a half is plenty of time. Um, a couple possessions, and you know, it's a ball game. So um, we'll see how the coaches come out and how they want to uh, attack or take care of the ball in the halls. Um, situation. He's got to use some clock and um, we'll see. And Connor's obviously got to be a little bit aggressive um, eventually. You know what I mean? They don't have to go go crazy trying to win that ball back right away, but they can't wait forever. Uh, I was going to say, as, as a coach down, how long would you wait? Would you stipulate in the huddle right here, hey, after 15, 20 seconds, we have to foul? Or Well, I mean, I don't know. I, yeah, I would start, uh, 15, 20 seconds in, you got to you know, start thinking about it. Um, it's a different it, strategy, obviously, with no shot clock. Right, right. And some people would, like, uh, try to follow. Well, they can't follow him right away, but I'm, like, would try to get into him defensively uh, earlier. I'm thinking they're going to I'm thinking they're going to let them run their offense and take away their strengths initially and see how it goes. Okay. Maybe they'll settle or miss and they could rebound. But then shortly thereafter, they got to think about fouling here. Again, regular season finale for Connor tonight. Hall has one more game. They're right back on the road tomorrow night at Avon. And they get it into Gellerman. And oh. she's fouled at the midcourt line by Venora. Mike D'Angelo off the bench can't believe the call. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of that call. Never have been. <laughs> when the when the official is on the opposite side or the back of the uh, the person he's calling a foul for a reach, that two bodies are in the in the way of. So uh, I don't know. Gellerman shooting double bonus. Two shots for Alexi Gellerman. I have to be nice to my uh, brethren now that I'm refing sixth grade travel games every once in a while. <laughs> it's not an easy job. No, it's not. It's really not. That's why we give the gentlemen and ladies and stripes a lot of credit, actually, for the job that they do. One of two for Gellerman, and it's a three-possession game. 44-37 with 125 to play. Connors thought about the three, gives it up to Tatiana St. Just. She drives and hits the shot. Tatiana St. Just. Another nice adjustment with her feet with that step sideways to finish like a Razors a, uh, a couple of seconds ago. St. Just with 11. 44-39. And a timeout for Brittany Huggins on the hall sideline with an even minute to play. Mike D'Angelo wanted him over and back. Didn't yeah, I didn't see. He said the ball hit there. I, I was looking at the, uh, whoever the guard was They're looking at their feet, and that wasn't there, but I didn't see the ball. 30 second timeout. Connor's doing a nice job. Uh, full court exactly. defensively, giving Hall a little bit uh, to deal with. And then just now in the half court, doing a good job of contesting passes and making it hard for them. So we'll see what Coach Huggins comes up with next. So 44 39 Hall. Raisner leading all scores with 20. Delaney Connors pacing the Chieftains attack with 13, while St. Just has 11. And again, the foul difficulty situation. O'Keefe with four for Hall. Four apiece on the uh, Connard side for Maggie Venora along with Delaney Connors. Maddie Mandyke to inbounds. Right Connard in using all five de defenders to play the four offensive players for all. Good strategy by Coach. St. Just following Mandyke, and Maddie goes back to the free throw line. St. Just with the push. Her second. Just the second foul on St. Just. Chieftains over the limit. And Dyke for two. And she misses the first. Yeah, Connor's going to foul and hope that Hall's going to miss, obviously, down this stretch here. Um, I'm impressed with uh, uh, Jenna being in at the end of the game. The coach is showing a lot of confidence in her ability to handle the ball in a tough situation. So one of two, still a two possession game. Long three on the way, it's good! Deep along the right side. 
Liz Ladd for a three and an immediate timeout by Mike D'Angelo with 51 and 310 seconds to go. Paul Connor, John. It's That's a Paul Connor dagger six. right there. Oh, not a dagger, but a jumper or a moment, whatever you want to call it. You know, you know someone's going to do that. And uh, quite frequently, it's the person you least expect to make it. That time it was Liz, and we know she could score. But I can't tell you how many times I'm like, Oh my God, you're killing me. That kid just made a jumper. Uh, <laughs> to, put, to put them ahead of real close. That's the great part about this rivalry. Um, and the game being this close, anyone can make a big contribution at any moment. Sure. So 45 42. Again, very, very similar to the game that was played on this court a year ago. It really, really is. It really, really is. Full court pressure, five on four defensively for Connick. And a foul on the inbounds. Shaw moved to the ball, but I think for, by Raisner, uh, got tangled up, their feet got tangled up with Tatiana. Foul starts to land, her second, Raisner. So Raisner to the Fancy. line, and again, Connard's last two fouls plus the bucket, all in nine seconds. There's still 51 seconds left. Right. That's good. Big foul shot to make it a two-possession game again. Yep. Plenty of time still, plenty of time. Connard shouldn't rush down. I mean, they have to push the ball, obviously, but in terms of shot, shot selection, something strong to the basket would be good. One of two for Raisner, 46-42. Hall with the lead, countered basketball with 45 seconds to play. This is for Eddie, the handoff to Ladd. She's hit two threes in this fourth quarter. St. Just goes up, misses the shot, but drew contact, and she'll get to the line. That looks Good like power just, move that time. Yeah, it looks like they decided to open the court up a little bit and flash Tatiana in there. And if not her, maybe Delaney's going to go in there. I'm guessing Tatiana's going to try to catch the ball, get to the basket, draw a foul, and if someone helps in, maybe they have uh, Delaney to catch the ball or someone else, one of the other guards to stick a three. Not a bad plan. Big defensive loss for Hall on that last exchange. Caroline O'Keefe has fouled out of the game. Yeah, we'll be seeing who comes in next. I mean, they're going to have a tough, tough go to try to stop Tatiana if she's going to continue to go to the basket. So uh, we'll see what happens. Another freshman. Into the Hall lineup, Olivia Boney. Oh, yeah. spot. Oh, yeah, that's great. Three freshmen so far tonight for Hall St. contributing. That's good for their program down the road. So here's St. Just at the line. Senior captain, averaging 12 points per contest. Misses the first off the left side of the iron. Needs to make this to get it back to a one possession game with 36 seconds. Yep, yep, this is a big one. And then we gotta play solid D here and maybe a turnover or a stop and then push it. It's good, one of two for St. Just. She has a dozen and it's 46-43 with 35 seconds to go. Ahead of the field is Gellerman off the glass and good! They beat the press to precision and it's 48-43. 25 Ooh. seconds to go. Connors for three. Misses the shot. Raisner gets the rebound for Hall. Still has it in the backcourt. And the two officials, Sylvester Turner and Chris Kelly, confer on the far sideline. Yeah, the, um, in that transition, it looked like, I don't know, they committed so far for it, Connor, that they just let the two girls sneak through for that easy layup. It's a big play right there. Obviously, we need a miss, and then we got a push call timeout. Ladd with the foul, sending Amber Raisner back to the line for Hall. And misses the first. Just to make it a six-point lead. It's good. 49-43, timeout Hall to set up their defense with 16 and 7 tenths seconds to go. Plenty of time, plenty of time. Uh, turnover, a three, you know, a couple possession here. A couple possessions here, and, you know, 
I've seen the uh, occasional four pointer, which is a which is a dirty word yeah. in coaching uh, parlance, I guess. Right, right. But uh, you know, anything's possible at this point. Hall needs to take care of the ball, be organized about getting it in, get it in the hands of the right kid, because Connor's going to come and foul them right away. Sure. So they can play that foul and, and score free throws game on the Hall end. And Connor, uh, you know, they've been not playing the person out of bounds, which is smart. You're playing five on four, right. doubling, taking away the best player, and hopefully. You know, forcing in someone that they want to foul to catch the ball. So we'll see what happens next. John, if you're Mike D'Angelo here, are you absolutely compelled to take a three? Or if you got a quick two, would you ask one of your players to settle for that? Uh, well, you know what? you got to take the, 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 the quickest, best shot you can at this point. Okay. And for depending on who gets the ball, you know, it's Delaney. It could be a long shot. If it's someone else, you got to get to the rim. Uh, call a timeout and then set up your defense again. So St. Just getting set to inbound. 49-43 Hall, 15 seconds to go. Here's Corietti speeding into the front court. Lena drives with the left hand, misses the shot. Rebound goes to Zdanowicz, off to Van Dyke. And the Hall Warriors, there's Gellerman. They're going to bring it back out. And the Hall Warriors win the game, 49-43. Well, history repeated itself from 40 years ago, 1977. We mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast that both teams, uh, that the Hall Connor teams that played there, uh, one, uh, one was 19 and 0, the Warriors, and Connor was 18 and 1, and the Warriors went on to win that game 40 years ago, and they just did it again tonight. Very good game. Uh, Connor had an opportunity to make some baskets down the stretch, but it just didn't work out for him tonight. Wonderful basketball game. Hall beating Connor for the first time. In the last six matchups, they had lost the previous five, and they go to 16 and three with their wrap-up game tomorrow night against Avon before the tournaments. And Connor ends the regular season at 16 and four. Great, a great season. It's not over for either one of them by any stretch of the imagination. You know, that's a, a great boost uh, for Hall, obviously. Um, and as much as you hate to lose, um, sometimes coaches use losses like this to. Uh, uh, work with their kids and tell them about, you know what, this is kind of a, a tournament kind of atmosphere. This kind of energy and excitement and hard play is what you're going to see down the road in the tournament. So, you know, let's learn from this. Absolutely. So hopefully that's what's going on in the Conrad locker room. John, always a pleasure. Thank you as always. Peter, my, uh, it was just, it's just a joy to do these games. They've been really competitive, a lot of fun, well attended. Uh, thanks for having me back. Always glad to have you, and we'll see you for boys volleyball coming up. Can't wait. In Can't April. Wait. Sounds good. John right, Benier, the coach, Thank you so joining much. us. So the final score tonight is 49-43 Hall, and we're going to talk to Brittany Huggins and perhaps Amber Raisner or a player of her choice coming up in a few minutes. You're watching West Hartford High School Sports on Channel 5 as presented
going to be about two seconds. Coach Huggins, and while it's been a magical first year for you as the head coach, this has to be your signature win. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. What was the key to victory here tonight? Hard defense, hard defense. Getting stops on defense. We know the offense will come. Uh, these girls really stuck to the game plan, um, and I'm really proud of them. You told me on the phone last Thursday, hey, we've been working big on our transition defense. <laughs> Give your kids a grade on that tonight. A. Uh, yeah, I'll give them an A. I think they scored less than 10 points in transition. Um, I would even say six. So I'll, we made it a point um, in practice the last few days, and the, the girls really did a nice job today. Um, again, I'm proud of them. I'm going to keep saying that, too. I'm really proud of them. You should. You should. You know, it was amazing. All the kids contributed tonight, but in particular, besides the young lady to my right, who's absolutely terrific, Talk about the freshman who played and gave you big minutes tonight, led by Zidanowitz. Yeah, um, so it, it's hard. We've thrown our freshmen this year into the fire, like big games, varsity games. We throw you in there. Jenna, do your best. Liv, do your best. The other Liv, do your best, right? So I think in a game that means so much, um, it was very nice to see, like, how composed both freshmen, all three freshmen, um, were coming into the game. Um, they weren't kind of shell-shocked. They kind of, like, embraced that pressure. Um, and it was good on both ends, you know. I got freshmen guarding some of their best players, and, and it was really nice to see. So, 16-3 and three going into the regular season finale tomorrow night against Avon. What can we expect in that one? Uh, hopefully the girls play just as hard as they did today. Um, and if they do, we'll come out with a win. But we got to be ready. Um, we approach every game the same way. It doesn't matter who we're playing. Um, so if they play with this energy, this intensity, um, we'll be able to come out with a win tomorrow. Is the sky the limit for this team come yeah, March? Yeah, it is. Yeah, the sky is the limit. If they stay locked in, if they stay focused, and the biggest thing, like, they cannot be satisfied, right? Don't be satisfied. Like, we can keep getting better, um, keep winning games, um, and I'm proud of them. You had won four straight before the loss to Connor. Now you've won five straight. I'm glad we're not the jinx for you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm talking to you after the game, so that's that's a pretty good thing. Hope to see you at the casino. All right, me too. Thank you. <laughs> and Brittany Huggins, thanks. Congratulations. Yeah, absolutely. Amber Raisner, congratulations. What's it like to win this game tonight against your crosstown rival on their floor? It's amazing because a lot of people have been doubting or so I feel like some people because we didn't have a good record last year were doubting us and didn't know if we could really go against and come out with a win against a really good team who was good last year good this year we were just coming up it was just amazing what is it about your game that you really step it up when you play Connor it's amazing you average 16 per contest for the regular season 20 tonight amazing job Thank you, thank you. Um, it was definitely, like Coach said, on the defensive end, we knew that if we stayed zone and we located the shooters at all times and we made sure to box out and so they didn't get any second chance shots, then we could go down on the offensive end to do what we do best. Give a plug for your coach. How great has she been for you guys this year? Oh my, she's been amazing. Like, she's constantly pushing us in practice and making sure that we're the best that we can be. So then make the, like she makes the practices hard, so then the games are a lot easier. And it's amazing, just the team chemistry has really come together and she's been a huge part of that. Thanks for doing this. Congra no congratulations. Thank you. Good luck going forward tomorrow night and uh, hope you have a nice deep run in March, okay? Thank you, thank you. Amber Raisner joining us tonight. Her 20 points leading the way, the Hall Warriors victorious by the count of 49-43 over Connor. They beat the Chieftains for the first time in their last six matchups. And boy, you have to like their chances going forward in the tournament in March. They've been just terrific throughout. If they win tomorrow night against Avon, they'd cap a terrific first year for Brittany Huggins as the head coach at 17 up and at three down. Connor, a great season for them as well. 16 and four as they end the regular season. First year head coach Mike D'Angelo has done a terrific job with them as well. Thanks to everybody involved with the broadcast tonight. It starts with Paul McConnell and Dennis Swanton at the War Chief Sports Council. I'm looking at Diana behind the camera. She and Meredith and Jen, a great job at Channel 5. And thanks to you out there watching us tonight as we saw Hall beat Connard by the count of 49-43. to A reminder, the rebroadcast of this game, February 25th, that's a Saturday night at 9 on Channel 5, and our next live broadcast one week from tomorrow, February 21st, will be at the Aquatic Center in the swimming pool. Hall takes on Connor. Until then, so long, everybody.